Welcome to the Headless Dam with Cloudinary Bootcamp course lesson number eight, an overview of media manipulation and transformation presented by Kristen Dune, Technical Customer Success Manager at Cloudinary. If you want to learn more about her, I have a great interview I did with her. It's in the um, introduction section of this course on headlesscreator.com, so go get your free account there. With that said, let's get Kristen in. Kristen, welcome. Glad to have you here. I'm going to let you get started. Uh, for those of you watching live, if you have any questions, put them in the chat, and I'll ask uh, Kristen. Kristen, it's all yours. Awesome. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Marcelo. Appreciate it. Uh, really excited to be with you all today. And as mentioned, we're going to go ahead and talk through media manipulation and transformation. Uh, so very high level. Welcome to the advanced portion of the course. Uh, and yeah, so today we're going to summarize, you know, some of the concepts and terminology that you heard throughout the introduction courses, uh, talk about things like formats, resizing, information you learned there, and really understand how can we use those in real life, show some demos through our DAM, talk about how we can do that programmatically through API, uh, reference some different material there. So let's go ahead and hop in. So today um, we're going to cover again from a high level. Why and how do we personalize media? So how do we do that again through URLs, uh, updating those with API? How do you do that within a use, user interface in a dam? Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and cover, you know, manipulation and transformation. There's, I, I personally would use those interchangeably, um, but I think a distinction that you can use, right? Anything that you manipulate media-wise will be transformed to a new derived image or asset. Uh, today we'll cover, you know, images, videos, both definitely focusing a little bit more on images. A lot of what can be transformed with those can also be transformed with video, just as a heads up. Um, but I think that a distinction here is that when you're transforming an asset, you are completely, you know, changing the basis of that. So maybe you're updating the format or the quality, creating a totally new derived version of that. And so the way I've broken this down is really looking at in terms of optimization, that's going to be transformation. Uh, so we'll, again, look at updating those uh, different qualities of that. Uh, also look at some resizing and cropping hands-on examples. We'll look at one example as well. So we we're all familiar with GIFs. We'll look at optimizing those, just as uh, some different examples of ways you can optimize your assets and why that's important. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and turn over to the aesthetic portion and really look at personalization in more of maybe a Photoshop type of manner. We'll focus heavily on the dam and really do examples here. We'll look at layering assets, we'll concatenate some videos, and we'll really dig into some different visual enhancements and look at some examples of that within the DAM and interface. So why is it important to personalize media? Again, you've heard a lot um, about you know, personalization and uh, about making changes to different formats, different format types, et cetera. Um, so why is this important? So there's a ton of different metrics that go into making up a site, a web page. Uh, each individual page is in the whole, in addition to the entire site overall. You might have heard of Lighthouse Analytics, PageSpeed Insights, Web Page Test. Uh, you know, Google's got a lot of different metrics to go ahead and look at your site and understand where that site's performance is at. And, it, and a way that I like to describe that is kind of the weight of the page specifically. So uh, what's the interaction with it? What's the heaviness of it? And a big portion of that's gonna be media. And so when you, when you look at the media on a site, images, audio, video, we really wanna make sure that those are as light as they possibly can be in terms of optimization. We of course wanna make sure that they're visually appealing for the user. We wanna make sure the user's having a good experience performance wise. Uh, you know, there's even metrics nowadays called like rage clicks, you know, things like that, that uh, people get angry or uh, click around a bunch because you know, things aren't loading fast enough. They leave sites. There's conversion rates with e-commerce. So we want to make sure people are actually going through the whole purchase and not just leaving before they do because they're frustrated with site performance. So uh, depending on, you know, what industry you're in, it's totally different what type of metrics you might be looking at. But regardless, media is going to impact that quite a bit. Also, of course, as referenced before, we are having a lot of different devices nowadays in terms of whether you're viewing on a, a Mac, a different you know, laptop, um, a tablet, a phone, and whether you're doing that within a native application, a browser, a web browser, et cetera. Uh, so we want to make sure that the media is adjustable. It's, it's satisfactory for users experiencing it in each of those different alternatives. Also, of course, mentioned a little bit earlier is industry best practices. So, uh, you know, whether 
you have a real estate industry and you have 3D models, um, whether you have, um, you know, more visually enhanced items that you need to have for an e-commerce site. Whatever that is, we want to make sure that we manipulate the media in a way that makes it appealing for those looking at it. And also today, we're going to cover the concept of pre-generated versus on-the-fly transformation. So this is something that has definitely become, uh, you know, more common and, and really a way to distinguish different sites in terms of having quality media or a quality media experience. You know, 10, 15 years ago, it was, it was really tough when a lot of developers maybe didn't have an easy way to dynamically add a lot of media assets to a site, update those all at once, um, you know, go ahead and, and come in and do that dynamically. Uh, so what we what we consider pre-generated versus on the fly, pre-generated would have been, you know, back in the early days when, uh, you know, we were we were already creating these whole images in some type of uh, software or, you know, on the machine it, it itself and then putting an embedded link into an actual, you know, web page and just having the image there. And something that's great that we'll cover today is what we consider on the fly transformations or more dynamic transformations. So. Maybe you want to buy a blanket and you want to put uh, you and your partner's name on it and you want to see what that looks like. So you go to checkout and you can actually type your name in and you can see your name pop up on the blanket. Uh, so that's, you know, just one example of so many different types of ways that dynamic media is really important so that we can ensure that, you know, we're giving users that experience that that's a little bit above the edge of where it was prior. So. Um, we'll see some examples of that with URLs and, and the kind of on the fly transformation actually happening in real life as well. So first we're gonna cover transforming for optimization. So the first thing that I wanna go ahead and point out here. So we see uh, this adorable coworkers kitty that is hoping to get famous, I was told. Um, was given an extra treat yesterday for, for being on this lovely presentation. Um, but we can see in the image here, I've highlighted some things in red at the bottom, and I'll show a demo in just a moment here, both throughout the URL as well as within the DAM interfaces. But we can see some different things highlighted. One of the boxes is showing the dimensions. Uh, so I know that Jen spoke with you a lot about resizing and actually what's being displayed. And we can see that the image is being displayed, you know, three times the size that it really needs to be. It was taken on uh, iPhone and, and put into a site um, or a page that is displaying it at a totally different size than it needs to be. By reducing that, we're going to therefore reduce the size of the image. And reducing the size of the image is huge because it's going to make the page load faster. The bandwidth is going to be decreased. Um, so two things we really want to look into and make sure we're getting optimal images and assets on sites. Another, we can see that it's being delivered as a different format. Uh, so the requesting browser has a header that gets sent over to, uh, you know, the user that's that's being just that's having the image displayed. And depending on what browser it is, there's different formats that are more optimal. And so programmatically or through uh, the, the user interface, we can say, hey, I want to make sure that we're selecting the proper format. So there's a lot of different ways. Of course, today's uh, examples are going to be with Cloudinary specifically, but you know, actual CDNs have this capability uh, to go ahead and make this decision. There's a lot of different ways to achieve that. And we want to make sure that we're uh, making that difference because you'll see that that's the first thing I'll demo and it's a huge difference just having the proper format or most optimal format being displayed. Um, so I, I show you at the top, we've got the current image at 6.92 megs. And then just with updating that format, we see such a drastic difference. When we also add a quality, quality is something that we'll cover a little bit today as well. So that's essentially saying, hey, um, what kind of compression can we put on an image so that maybe the user eye doesn't notice a difference in the image quality or degradation, you know, that's very noticeable at all. Maybe you'll have a couple little pixels here or there that you see something different in, but we're really not going to have a different user experience. However, we're compressing that image to a point that's most optimal in terms of, again, of, of making that Im image or asset lighter. And so, again, this can be applied to video, too. We're just going to show an example with image today. Um, so those three different factors together, and then also with the resizing. So look at that. We have this image that started at 6.92 megs, and we're taking it down to like 220 kilobytes. That's a massive difference. And think if you have a ton of different images or videos on your on your page or on your site, think of what a drastic difference that's going to have if you do this to all different assets. And again, if having the ability to do that programmatically and updating it on a mass version is, is really huge. So... Uh, the first thing we'll do, we'll go ahead and hop into a demo really quick and take a look. Uh, so we have our lovely friend here again. And so we can see uh, within Cloudinary the way, and I know you've probably seen this in some other video tutorials as well, but 
Um, the way that we say, hey, this is a different image or derived image asset, whatever that asset may be, is by updating the URL with parameters to make those transformations. So the first one that I mentioned is going to be updating the, the format of this. And so if we just add F auto. We can see that it's loading here. And so this is what's considered on the fly. And after an image loads for the first time, that's going to be cached and that's going to reference from cache. So it's going to pop up immediately. But the first time this happens, it's actually undergoing those changes. It's happening dynamically on the fly and making this new different transformed image. So we saw that reload. That's right when it got cached. And so we have this media inspector tool from Cloudinary that I'll pull up a few times today. But we can see again, now it's coming back as an AVIF. So the format has updated. And also it's gone down to the 1.8 omegs, which is crazy. Um, so that's just one of the changes. We can go ahead and add Q auto and add the different width for the image as well to get that final result that we saw. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop over to another demo really quick in terms of doing this through the interface. So this is going to be the Cloudinary um, DAM interface in terms of updating assets for you here today. So we'll go through quite a bit of um, you know, available options here. So something that we have got here is going to be looking at uh, cropping this image. So there's a ton of different ways that you can crop. You can scale, um, you can uh, limit, you can, you can pad. We'll go through some of these throughout the presentation today. Um, but the first thing that we did, and I'll get, I'll get to that in just a moment, but the first thing that we did as well is updating the format to say, hey, let me automatically choose what format that I want. Next, we went ahead and did quality. I want you to decide for the quality what the most optimal quality is going to be for the specific image. And then for that width, I know that this width is 1334. It's going to scale that. So scale is going to keep the proper aspect ratio for the image. It's not going to make it look any different visually. Um, but that's really all that we need for that actual display dimensions, as we saw. Refresh preview. So here we have the kitty. And as you could see, when I was making these changes, the actual URL for this is updating. So now I can see that I had a crop scale. I had F auto for the automatic format, Q auto for the automatic quality. And I updated that width to the proper dimension for displaying that. I can now, click on the Real quick, yeah. I guess what's, um, I wanna make sure what's important to understand here on the, what we're doing is we're not creating a new version. We're just transforming it using the API. It's still the same one single source of truth version, correct? Um, so it actually is creating a new derived version. So if I come back here, I can see the derived images. It's going to actually be generating a different image each time. I see. So okay. this does create actual copies, but based on the one. So what happens if we then uh, change the original? Do we just uh, refresh the derived versions? Um, so uh, the original is going to always be stored there for you. Um, okay. There's ways you can't get rid of that. Um, but each derived version, so what we do at Cloudinary is we count these as a transformation. And so essentially what you're wanting to do is reference the specific URL that's here um, mm -hmm. anywhere in your site that you're wanting to make those changes. So this is kind of the dynamic option. That's what's great throughout the API is that within one single call, you can update each of these parameters. So I can say, hey, I want to make these 10 different changes to an image. Um, and also I want to do that for all thousand images on the actual site. So that's a great way to do it through the API. Um, but then also, no, it's, it's great because you can have the creatives come in and also create this as well. Um, it just has to be referenced anywhere on the site that that new drive version has to have this updated URL because it essentially is a totally new image. It's a totally new version of that image. It. And it's just saying, hey, because that's the lighter one. That's the one that's, you know, uh, happier and, and better to have. On right. Site. So question for you is if we go and change the original one, like the cat one, and we just have a different pose of the cat, but use the same, just update that image. Do we then have to recreate all the derived images? Yep. Correct. Okay. So there would be new URLs for those or? Yep. yep all new URLs. Okay. Yep. Every different image will have a different URL. Um, but you know, it's, that's what's great with media nowadays is there's a lot of ways people have workflows, things like that, where yeah. anytime you update that image, Hey, I'm automatically going to apply these 10 You can automate this through. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Great, yep. thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the automation's a, a great tool and great way to go ahead and do that programmatically. So, um, yeah, it's it's very nice, um, you know, to do that. And I think it's it's awesome that nowadays we have the ability to do that both through the API, do that programmatically through code, as well as do that within an actual interface here as well, like we saw. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, now we'll go ahead and hop back into the presentation. We'll be back and familiar with the dam plenty throughout this. So that's kind of like a, a high level introduction to the most used or recommended optimizations, at least from Cloudinary's standpoint point of view, that can really help. Um, we saw with just one image what, what a difference that made. Um, so again, very, very big deal if we're doing that um, for a, a mass amount of those. Something else that we have here, another example in terms of quality. So quality was one of those factors that I mentioned. There's, uh, this is, you know, a lot to point out the just endless possibilities of ways that you can help uh, a user have a good experience on a site. And this is just one of those. It's called low quality image placeholder. So there's a lot of sites actually, um, like almost all the football sites, the 49ers write on every single one of their pages, they use this. And essentially what it does is it, it puts um, an image that's going to be a blurrier image or you know some kind of version of that asset on the page um, as soon as possible. So if I go onto a site and I know it's going to be a heavier picture, it's going to be something crisper that takes a while to load, I want to be sure that the users are at least seeing something before that, you know, takes, you know, 10 seconds to show up for them. So this might be good for, for rental sites, for travel, e-commerce sites, things like that, where you just want to have that user experience that's going to make sure people don't leave. Um, so we can go ahead and hop back into a demo really quick here. Still have our kitty up, but an example of this. On the right, we do have that low quality image placeholder there. You can make this as blurry as you want, whatever size you want. But we can see that, yes, um, while it does take time to go ahead and get that crisper look, just a very slight amount more of time to get that pulled up. Um, sometimes it might be even equal for the actual full image to load for you. But we did see that, you know, the, the experience we had was much better because we actually saw something in the beginning. So. Again, with quality, um, this can really help reduce the bandwidth on the page originally when it's loading. It can help with the overall experience there as well. It seems here like the idea is uh, the perception of loading quicker, right? Because you're still seeing kind of... Plus also, if you're on that page as a user and you see kind of the blur, you already have an idea and maybe that's not where you want to be. So you can click on that image quickly to go to the next page, right? As opposed to wait for it to load and not see anything. Precisely. Yep. Yeah, exactly. makes sense. Beautiful. Um, so yeah, we'll hop back into the presentation now and continue on. So. Beautiful. So the next thing we're going to hit on um, for optimization, and this goes a little bit into more of the manipulation or personalization type of discussion that we were having earlier. So another concept that Cloudinary has is what we call gravity. And so essentially what gravity is doing is when we crop an image, um, you know, we're, we're going to crop it for different reasons. Maybe we want a thumbnail. Maybe we want to have the actual portrait. Uh, and so what gravity does is we can say this is going to choose the most interesting part of an image if you use what we call our automatic gravity. And we can apply that again programmatically through URL, you, through the API for every single asset. If you have an e-commerce site and you want to make sure that whatever shoe is showing up, it's showing the, the middle or the most you know beautiful part of that shoe in every situation, give it a more uniform look across the pages. Um, or we can use it for different things like banners. We can say, hey, I want to crop just the top of this image and I want to make sure that it's, again, the most appealing part of it that's showing within the banner. So no matter what the crop is, we're getting that desired outlook based on using gravity. And so gravity is awesome um, as well because you don't have to use an automatic version. You can also use it by specific items. So maybe I have a picture um, with a ton of different factors in it. I've got outside with trees and leaves and a bunch of people running and somebody riding a bike, but I want to crop on the bike. I can do, um, you know, focus gravity on the bike specifically. And so again, push that programmatically. So every picture that has a bike, I want to focus on that. I want to promote my bike shop because they're all specialized bikes. And so I'm going to go ahead and put bike. And then on every single image on the page, it'll focus on that bike. Um, so the example that I'm going to give today is what you see with the uh, woman here who is modeling out in front of a building. We do see that there's you know, not a ton going on in the background, but there's definitely some different factors, some different uh, variations of, of what's happening there. Um, but we're gonna take a look uh, here at a demo and show you some examples of that. So what we have once again is the interface. 
Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at doing what we call a crop fill. So that's going to create an asset that has the specified width and height, but it's not going to distort the asset. It's going to, it's going to scale it um, to the point that it needs to be scaled. Um, there, if the requested aspect ratio is different than the original, cropping is going to occur on the dimension that's going to exceed the requested size after the scale happens. So essentially, you're specifying what part of the original asset that you want to keep um, when you're putting gravity on it. So it's going to actually you know, change with the images. You're going to see something different, not all of it, since we're keeping that asset ratio. Um, but with gravity, using C fill with gravity is very important because we're saying, hey, I want to make sure that I'm not getting the wrong part of the image. I want to make sure that um, here the woman's not in the middle. If I crop that and it's just going to crop around it um, with a normal, you know, kind of square in the middle, it's not going to be what I want to actually see for that. So I've got a C fill. I'm going to change the width to 450 the height to 600 here. So I can see I have the image that popped up. And since I did that fill crop specifically, it's giving me the option to put a gravity application on this. So I'm going to do let's crop on her face. So I can see that it moved over to adjust so that this woman's face is now showing within the image. Again, I can see in the URL that's been generated here, I have her face showing. I have that crop that's um, going to be that fill crop saying I want to keep the aspect ratio and just do the part of the image that I want with the face. And then I see the new height and width that has been adjusted. Of course, you can add all those other transformations. We'll see different variables later on as well. Um, but that's an awesome example of, hey, I want to show the portrait view of this woman for that specified reason there. Now here, uh, gravity did auto face detection, obviously. Um, if it can't detect, let's say the, the image is kind of iffy, right? It can't detect. Is there a way either programmatically or through the tool here to click on the face and say, this is the face and then crop around there or no? Um, with our tool specifically, <laughs> uh, um, it's, it's definitely meant more for the programmatic way. We, so we, the auto detection. Yes. We want to do the auto detection. Um, what we essentially do is that we have a lot of different widgets and a lot, again, a lot of other people have, have similar ways of using tools like this as well, right? So we'll have a widget. So say I want to have someone programmatically do what you just said, but it does a bad job at having that crop. It can't see the face at all, can't detect it. Right. So I'll also have a, a widget before I actually put that picture from the person that made it programmatically onto the site, I will have a widget that will say, hey, I can, I have this box and I can adjust the box anywhere on the frame mm. that I want to. And that's where the programmatic comes in really well with kind of the creative aspect. Cause you can do like the, the programmatic at the beginning and then have that person come in with the actual uh, interaction with the interface right before you put it on the site and say, first of all, I want to make sure it's good or it's, it's to my satisfactory needs. Mm -hmm. um, and also I want to go ahead and kind of like uh, adjust that a bit. If maybe the cropping wasn't the way that I wanted it to be. Um, with, you know, a spe specific box. And a lot of the time we can say, hey, I want to make sure that box always is a 450 by 450 or always Got going it. to be keeping aspect ratio. So creative doesn't have to make those decisions. They can just sit there and say, hey, here's right before in the widget, right before I put it on the page, what I'm going to drag and then go ahead and put it on there. So right, right. So the options. answer is kind of yes, but you have to do it outside of this tool here. Yep, exactly. Yep, yep. perfect. Great, thanks. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Okay, so next say, I wanna make a thumbnail. I'm going to go ahead and click on crop thumb. And so again, let's say I just refresh preview here. So we've got cropping on the thumb and I still had that face specified there. Of course, with thumbnails a lot of the time, Going to have an equal dimension here by 250 250 something along those lines and now i can see with the proper dimensions of a specific thumbnail we're going to get the crop of that um and also still focused on the face so uh, of course you can change any the gravity to any of the options here and as mentioned earlier um you could do it just on on the hair on the hand 
and it will crop around that. And you can take the URL, you can add it directly into the URL, make the updates as I did with the cat originally, uh, or you can do it through the interface, through the API um, as a full new URL, anything you would like to do there. Awesome. All right. Then the final option I'm going to do here, I'm going to go back to that C fill. So saying I'm not going to have the original image and everything that was showing within that image. I'm going to change the width to 600. I'm going to change the height to 150 because I want to put a banner on the top of my page. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this preview. So again, we can see, um, depending on whatever size that you want, gravity or having a way to detect a certain part of the picture that's going to be appealing is a very important thing because it, it's going to you know, do that on a way that you don't have to have people come in and make those changes over and over and over again for all the images. Um, it'll just automatically do it. It'll display and it'll use that learn detection over time through AI that it's sitting there and getting smarter each time saying this is the most appealing part of an image. And it's learning that, uh, you know, program programmatically on, on our back end as well. Um, so yeah, that's an example with cropping here. I'll go ahead and show you as well. We've got on our site within our documentation page, uh, this is just something you can play around with to get another understanding. So I did, I'll show you in a little bit as well more about padding. Um, but crop padding is saying, hey, um, I'm, I'm changing this image. I'm going to keep the aspect ratio, keep it looking the same, keep the whole image. Maybe there's some different, some extra room on the sides though, um, from the overall size that I wanted. So you can see with padding, uh, there's a different, you know, color background here where it's making it look better um, than if I weren't to have that and just have like a blank space and some white that would automatically be added there. So with cropping, there's endless different options you can have. Uh, this is a great place if you ever want to come and mess around um, and just kind of see the different crop options, see the different resize options. And really understand the different applications and places why this might be important. All right, hop back into the presentation, continue on here. So another important thing um, with websites and pages nowadays is making sure that we have a responsive solution. So responsive solutions are massively impactful, not just for the user experience, and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment, but also because of bandwidth savings. If I have a site, uh, you know, this, this is for, again, the different devices. If I'm on a native application, if I'm on a browser, um, if on, on a normal laptop, and or if I minimize a screen, I want the images to move with the page. I almost expect that nowadays. Um, I want to make sure that whatever I'm seeing is still appealing. It's not half on the page, half off when I minimize. And a huge part of that, too, is really saving with bandwidth. Um, so again, if you're displaying something way too big, the page is too large, it's really going to save a ton of bandwidth because the images are going to be lighter and smaller if I'm response, you know, resizing those responsibly um, as I'm changing the actual page itself. So we did just cover resizing, and that's the first part of this responsive solution. And the second part of that is DPR. So you may be familiar with that device pixel ratio. So depending, you know, whether you have a 4K monitor, whether you have, um, you know, a older phone, it's going to have a different ability for what it actually shows. So we can see in the example here that we have a DPR of 2.0 in that water droplet on the right. So we can see it's crisper. If you really look, it's saying every pixel I have is going to have two pixels by two pixels. And if I do a DPR of three, it's going to be three by three. So essentially nine per that one pixel. So um, if we can go ahead and update that DPR, that's also being determined by the browser that we're in, by the device we're on. And there's ways to do that programmatically, automatically. You can use uh, JavaScript solutions for this. You can have the browser decide um, and use the browsers is that within your code specifically for your site. So there's a ton, a ton of different ways to achieve this responsive solution. Um, but it's extremely important to do this in terms of the actual experience that the user's having, both with what they're expecting to see, as well as with bandwidth savings. Um, so we'll go ahead and hop in and look at a demo really quick again on the Cloudinary documentation. So we can see that we've got four columns here on the top with a specific DPR and size. And then we've got 432 grid. When I take the page and I minimize this, I can see the images change depending on the size of the page. 
I can see that now it still is visually appealing. If I would have minimized this and nothing would have happened with these images, I would see like one and a half of the images now. So not only am I getting a better visual appearance, but also I'm saving great bandwidth. And you can see the same thing happens when I maximize the screen again, these images come back um, to their original view and fit within the viewport, fit within what you're expecting to see. So responsive images is another way to really optimize your site, um, have lightweight pages and really have that better experience uh, for the users. And we'll hop back into the presentation again. And another example that we have in terms of optimizations here is with GIFs. So this is again an, a, an example of just the endless different ways that we can optimize. And so um, here, we have an original uh, GIF, which I'll show the optimization in terms of updating the URL in just a moment. Um, but we can have, a, qu again, quite a few different ways to do this within Cloudinary, outside of Cloudinary. Um, and the first one is adding what we call that F auto again, automatically detecting the format. If you need to keep it as a GIF, we can go ahead and say, hey, I want to display it still as that, but have the browser detect what you know the best option is going to be. And then the second option that we see on the right is if you have the ability to control HTML, you can actually convert the GIF to a video. And you're going to be looping that HTML and saying, hey, automatically loop this. So it's like a GIF-like effect. And you can see that it's going to be massively reduced because we're able to take the optimization capabilities of a video and actually apply it to that. Um, and so this is just another example with whatever type of media that you have. Um, you know, there's always different ways to think around the box, think outside of the box and think around the norm of what you might just think of putting that asset onto your page and really get advantage of, out of optimization capabilities there. Um, so, yeah, we'll hop into just a quick demo here. So uh, another famous uh, co-workers kitty that that's going to get very popular, of course. Um, Cats are super excited about this. We see within the original uh, GIF here, pull up this media inspector from Cloudinary one more time. We can see the 8.54 megs. Add that F auto parameter there and take it down 1.02 megs. So we just reduced that um, GIF by a about eight times. And once again, not only is that impacting performance and speed, it's it's yeah, it's definitely improving speed because uh, bandwidth is going to be massively decreased there. Um, you're having less you know weight with that bandwidth call as well. Awesome. Back to the presentation. Cool. Next, we're going to talk about how to do more of the media manipulation. So this is for the personalization aspect. So a lot of this is going to be, hey, what type of industry am I in? What uh, is the purpose of my site? What are the different types of effects that I want to have on the media on my page to make them fit the kind of desired outlook and catch that the users are having with that specific experience? We'll look at some examples on the Cloudinary side in, in terms of, uh, you know, ways that we can overlay text on different images or videos. We can add different videos together. Um, we'll really cover some of these topics uh, that'll, that'll show how to personalize your specific site for you. So the first one that we're going to look at is localization and branding. And so again, if you think about this, uh, this is a very big one in terms of being able to push this out to different social medias, different partners. Uh, look at different overlays. So the example here is on the left, we see, you know, the coat with the, the Cloudinary overlay. Um, we see it in different locations within the actual image. On the right, we see, hey, I have a sale on this shoe. We can update that uh, exact same URL in different languages. And we can push that out depending on what site it is. Um, I'm in one country, so I want to push out all these URLs with this language to site A versus site B for a, a different language as well. We often hear customers say that, you know, last time they had to update a logo that's on their assets, that it takes forever to get everything on the site uploaded, to get it all changed. Um, what takes, you know, a very long time and a lot of work hours to make those individual changes on each and every single asset, on images, on videos. And so if logos are being applied programmatically, it's a super quick way to just update a single asset um, within a console, wherever that's stored, and then push those changes out to everywhere within one country or another country or, or a different page on your site. Um, so yeah, it's, it can be uh, you know, very unique in terms of your workflow with, with making these updates. 
Um, it can be very unique to whatever your needs are for uh, whatever type of industry or use case that you have here as well. And so the same concept with that overlay is uh, you can do something like product badging. Maybe we want to take an image and uh, put some type of conditional statement in programmatically again through the API and say, um, there, there's also an option to do this within the interface. Um, and the interface is definitely, you know, it constantly catching up to the, the options that you have throughout the API and do that doing this with actual, uh, you know, code and pulling things in there too. So say, hey, if uh, you can put metadata on images. And so in the upper right, you see a tag for uh, 30 off. So if, if there's a sale, if I see 30 off within a tag on a specific image, then I want to go ahead and overlay this 30% uh, off onto the image. And I can specify where in the image I want to see that. Uh, and again, this will push that out to all of the different assets that are on the site that have that specific tag. So I'm going to tag anything I want to give that discount on or offer that discount on. And I'm going to, with you know one conditional statement, apply this badge 30% off to the upper right corner of every single one of those assets. So um, it's definitely, uh, you know, a great way to do, you know, sold out or different types of effects. You could do grayscale, you can do whatever type of enhancement that you actually want to do on images uh, programmatically, again, depending on some type of conditional statement. So uh, overlays, being able to actually put text or a watermark on top of an image is a very big uh, win there as well. So there is that for you. And I will go ahead and show an example of overlay on our side as well. So we have another example image here. Uh, I've got just the nice flowers. I've got a little bee. And so I also had put a cloudinary watermark saved within my, what we call our media library, which has all of our assets stored within that. So I'm going to say add overlay or watermark. So I'm gonna say, add this overlay image. There's the ID. Refresh preview, so you can see very light in the middle here. I have got, if I click on this, make it a little bit bigger, uh, clearer without any background. We can see that there is going to be this cloudinary watermark that's on it. So phenomenal option for watermarking as well. And then I see with my overlay image that I've specified here, I have all the options for where to put that. So if I wanna put it uh, upper, left corner here, I can go ahead and add that to the upper left corner. If I want to make that watermark smaller, I can do that as well. And so, um, yeah, there's there's just a ton of options in terms of layering on both images and videos that can be very beneficial for a lot of different industries and sites as well. Awesome. Um, so yes, I'm going to go sh run through now uh, some different types of maybe effects or options that you have with your media. I'll come back to this image in just a moment to show quite a few more examples for you. Um, but one thing I want to show as well in terms of video here. So back to the cats, um, a little bit blurry of a, of a cat video here. The first 16 seconds or the cat like its paw, no problem. There's a lot of different options you have in terms of concatenating videos too. Um, so we've got this cat, and then we added a picture of a dog in the end. So this could be very beneficial maybe for something that's shoppable. If you want to go from one product to another, if you want to go from one training course to another. Uh, so with videos as well, the options are endless in terms of, you know, effects that you can have in terms of adding, um, you know, different videos, one on top of another uh, visually or, you know, adding one after another as well. So the video of the dog was added uh, dynamically. Correct. Yeah. Oh, so you could create, let's say, a trailer on the uh, on the fly of all your products and post it on your homepage, let's say. Yeah. And you can easily change anything in between. So you can go to the fourth video and just reinsert a new one, and now you have. That's very cool stuff. Okay, and it's all done through the tool. Yep. Yep. No, this is uh yes, and there's of course a ton of other tools uh, that can do things like this as well, right? And you have uh, the option once again to go ahead and, and change that. You can see within the URL here. Um, that we're referencing both the dog video as well mm -hmm. as the cat video. So I'm saying uh, splice this in. You can always put offsets. So if I wanted to start this dog video a few seconds later or end it a few oh. seconds earlier, if I want to fade in, fade out. I um, mean, of course, yeah, there's endless tools that can do this. But 
Um, it's just, it's a great way that you can do it either through URL, pulling in through API and doing that programmatically or doing it through the interface or having, again, a conjunction of both the creative and the developer. Well, the nice thing about the API is that uh, if, through the code, you can always sense new videos and automatically insert them right through the API. So when there's a new version of this product, boom, replace yep. this video with that. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, Absolutely. very cool. Thank you. Cool. So uh, the final thing that I want to show you today is really looking at more of just the aesthetic, uh, maybe more of the kind of Photoshoppy changes that you're going to have with your media. Um, so the options here, again, are endless. And uh, most all what you can do through the API or code, you're going to be able to do through the interface as well. And so we've got this specific image here. I'm just going to play around with a few things. So the first thing I'm going to do is put crop with padding. All right. So if I did the 550, 367, I can see I still have the watermark on this. Get rid of that really quick. Refresh preview. I can see within this new image that it added the padding because uh, that, again, aspect ratio I want to keep, but now we have extra space within the image. So within the padding, this is where we can start making it to have different effects and such. I want to say, hey, can you automatically determine what type of background that I can have? Great. This is going to be the most visually appealing background. Um, and we're saying all of this background auto being updated within the URL as I'm making the changes here. It's a phenomenal option. So go ahead and restart this back to the beginning. You can add general effects. So there's endless effects that you have here. So you're familiar with probably a lot of these. You can do something like blur this. After I blur this, maybe I want to add a border to it as well. Perfect. So I added that border to the image. And then I actually want to change that blur to have a grayscale. So this E is essentially saying, what effect am I adding to the image itself? Uh, you can make it, um, you know, any, any type of transformation that you want visually effect wise, you can make that happen through either the interface or, or again, um, through just updating the URL on the back end too. So after we make these changes, I want to go ahead and look at the derived images. You can download each of the derived images. You can see the changes that were made. We did the padding. We did the watermark added to it. Um, so all of these different options here, you're going to see those derived versions. And if I want to go ahead and pull the URL for each of those, I can reference an old one, either as a creative or as a, you know, a developer on the back end too. All right. And go back to the presentation, but I do believe that um, is going to... The it just kind of had a high level overview talking about the different uh, types of manipulation you can do on the effects and aesthetics as well. So, um, yeah, I think uh, that's about it for a high level. I just wanted to say thank you very much. And uh, yeah, feel free to reach out with any type of questions or conversation you want to have about manipulating or transforming media. That was great, Chris. And thank you so much. That was awesome. Um, that's a lot of stuff uh, to take in today. So thank you for that. If people want to get a hold of you, would it be the email that's shown there? Yes, yeah, so it would. That would be it. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. And uh, thanks to the rest of you. I hope you enjoyed watching this lesson. Remember to continue your journey learning all about digital asset management systems. But watching the next lessons, we have many more lessons coming up for you. Also remember, once this uh, entire bootcamp is completed, you're going to have the ability uh, to get your knowledge certification. Uh, so make sure you use the study guide in this lesson and all the previous lessons. Um, where you can uh, learn more and you'll find those in the bonus section of this course. And as always, you can get a hold of me right there, marcelo at headlesscreator.com. So thanks for watching and cheers.